Hi everybody, welcome back again with more of Drawing with Daniel. I'm Daniel, and here's my little logo. So we're Drawing with Daniel. These are video tutorials on drawing step-by-step, -step. and these tutorials are uh, ideally suited uh, for kids or very early beginning drawers. Uh, I am an amateur artist. I am not a professional artist. I have lots of artist friends that are 10 times better than me. But uh, I have been drawing ever since I was little, and I've learned a lot of things and techniques and developed my skills over the years. Uh, I don't make a living with it because uh, I am a registered nurse. This is just a hobby of mine, something I do for fun, something I do on the side. And uh, I'm just trying to pass on a little of the things that I've learned over the years to you, if you're interested, uh, to your children. So especially now in this time uh, during this uh virus crisis that we're going through a lot of the kiddos are stuck at home and they're missing out on art class and art schools uh, so maybe they can watch these and help with their art a little bit while they're at home uh, and you know practice their drawing right alongside me okay so uh, I don't want to do too much talky talky at the beginning of these videos I did that a lot in my very first one I don't want to waste a lot of time but uh, just wanted to lay that little disclaimer out at the very beginning and explain what I'm doing here as well. Uh, each time I put a tutorial on this YouTube channel, I will have a different subject matter. The first video tutorial was how to draw a fox, and then I've already done one on how to draw a horse. Now that one was geared towards more younger kids, early elementary age, uh, lower level of drawing skill. I will always do two videos with the same subject matter. So this is video number two of the horse. And this time we're gonna take it up a notch and this is gonna be for an older kid, someone with more skills, uh, and it'll be a more detailed drawing, less cartoony. So uh, our first uh, video on horses was basically this. It's a, it's a nice style, but it's more simplistic, more cartoony. It's a fun horse, and we created uh, several different kinds of horses with that style of body. So that's what we did in the first video. But we're going to take it up a notch, and uh, as I've always say, go on the computer or library books or books you already own at home for your reference subject matter. I just printed this off the computer on Google Images. This is a horse, obviously, a very pretty horse just standing there. Just kind of like the same pose this one was standing in, just from the side. And that way you can see the whole body. You know, you could do it from different angles, but this side view is popular because now I get to see the whole horse. I get to see that nice long body. It's, this one, his head's turned a little bit towards the camera. And this is what we're going to use as our reference today. So this will be over here, uh, probably out of the shot of the camera, but I wanted you to see what we will be drawing. I'm going to put it over here so I have something to look at. Okay, here's my piece of paper that I'm going to use. We talked about paper in the past. This is just a very inexpensive, cheap paper I'm using. I'm not going to use a high-quality, expensive paper just on a, a drawing exercise. This comes in a big, thick pad. There's like a hundred sheets in here. Only cost maybe ten bucks. Might have even been less than that. You can get it on sale. The it's only a sixty pound weight. It always says that down here somewhere. A uh, sixty pound is a very lightweight paper. It's not very thick or heavy. It's maybe just a little heavier than your computer typing paper, uh, but not much thicker than that. Uh, it's great for sketching. But, uh, you know, you wouldn't want to do a drawing on this and try to sell it to somebody. But there's no, nothing wrong with practicing on a, something like that. So normally, as I've stated in the past, I would sketch with a hard pencil, like a 2H, 3H, 4H pencil. It's a very light mark, but that's not going to show up very well for you for this video. So I'm going to use a 3B pencil. has the number right there. B, uh, it means soft. The, the softer the lead, the darker the image will be. So 3B is a dark pencil. It's a soft lead. 
Uh, if you use the 4B, 5B, 6B, the higher number, it's going to be even darker and softer. Sm it's going to get more smudgy. So I'm going to use this 3B and hopefully it will show up for you. And occasionally I will bring the paper up close to, closer to the camera so you can see. So we remember the reference photo we're going to use. And we're going to do this pretty similar in a way, the way we did the more simplistic drawing. We'll start out with these simple shapes, circles, cylinders, tubes, ovals, twisted and turned into a bean shape, triangles, all those basic shapes. You use those when you do a more simplistic cartoon drawing. You use it when you use those basic shapes when you do a more detailed drawing as well. So I like to start out at the head. So I'm gonna do a little circle here. And it might be even more oval shaped than circle. And then I'm gonna use, put a little tube on there same way I did the cartoony one. I started out in the circle. I had a little tube for the snout. That's what I did here as well. I got a little oval shaped circle and a little tube for the snout. Now I need that long neck, that long neck. Here was my little oval right here. Kind of like a circle and my tube oval shape right there. Now I need this neck right here. That's gonna be my cylinder, but see how the cylinder is more narrow here, right behind the head, and the base of the cylinder is gonna be a little wider. So keep that in mind. What you can do is take your pencil, and when I'm looking at this from across the table, I can measure how long that neck's gonna be. And then I can do the same down here. So that way I keep my proportion. So I'm going to set that back there. I'm going to look at it and mark. Now I know it's going to be about this long. Oh, I just dropped that. So let me get... My dog's laying at my feet. Wondering what I'm doing while I'm talking so much. All right. So... I might have made that a little too long, but it'll be okay, I think. So, there's our cylinder. Now, remember, just like we did this guy, of course, this horse is facing, that my cartoon simplistic one is facing this way, and this more realistic horse is facing that way. So, this bean shape will be kind of flipped around. Remember the back where you put that saddle where you sit on top of the horse? It kind of goes in a little bit right there. You can make that a circle if that'll help you. His rib cage is, is right in here. So here's where you sit on the horse where you place the saddle. We got a big circle here, a big circle back here. His belly's right there, so it'll bulge down. This is going, this is going, shape is going down that way. This is going down that way. See how that goes in? That goes out. All right. So basically, what we've done is this step right here, like we did in the first video. Except it's more realistic portions. I use my pencil to measure. And I'm, I'm making mine a little bit longer than what it really is. Let me see. Yeah, I'm, I'm making mine about a quarter inch. Mine's about this much longer than what I'm getting there. So I'm off a little bit on my proportions, but that's okay. It'll be a longer horse. All right, so now I need some tubes for the legs. And look at this part of the horse here. What I was talking about a moment ago is basically I was holding up my pencil and measuring from about here to here, this distance right here. And my drawing, might I might have made it a little bit too long, but that's all right. Now we're doing this. So 
What are those, what shapes am I gonna use for these legs? Am I gonna use a circle? No. Square, no. Triangle, no. This would be like a tube shape. It's wider at the top. It's not the same width all the way down. Whereas my cartoony one, it kind of was, wasn't it? But it's a more simple drawing. This one, we want it to be somewhat more accurate. So it's going to be wider up here, more narrow down here. The bottom half will be more narrow than the top half, just like your leg is. Look at your thigh, the area of your leg above your knee. It's wider. Then when you go below the knee, it's more narrow, isn't it? Well, it's the same with the horse. Here's his knee right here. See how it's almost like a circle right there? So I'm going to use a circle when I draw this. Circle right here. Circle right here. Circle right here. Right there where his kind of knee is. I guess that's his knee. So I'll use a circle. Now my, my cylinder is going to come down, be more narrow at the bottom. There's going to be another circle at the bottom. There's my tubes, my cylinders. Sometimes I call it a tube. Sometimes I call it a cylinder. Let me get my... Oh, okay. So I just had to look at my reference material again to kind of see what I was doing. There's that one. There's that one. I use a lot of these tube and circle connections when I draw human bodies, too. Like the arm, it'd be tube, circle right here at the elbow joint, uh, another tube, and then a circle up there where my shoulder joint is. So whether I'm drawing an animal or a horse, I mean an animal or a human, I'll use little tubes and circle. There's, there's his little hoofs. So see how I use a cylinder or a tube here? Circle at that joint area, the joint where they, where they, where they meet up and bend. There's a little ball there. So I got a little circle, another tube. See how it's wider up here at the top? It slowly and gradually narrows, and then it gets even more narrow below. And then there's another little ball that would kind of be your, if this was a human body, that'd be kind of the ankle area. And I did the same up here as well. So see how we're coming along there? Mine's maybe off proportion wise a little bit. It's a little longer, but it's not too too far off. You know, horse bodies are a lot longer than what you might think if you've ever stand next to a horse. Of course, you know, it depends on the breed of horse too. So a, a racing horse might be more sleek, more longer than a workhorse, one that's used out on the farm might be more compact, more muscular. So it just depends. So my sister knows everything about horses. She owns a horse. She loves horses. She's always worshipped horses ever since she was a little kiddo. So she would obviously know all the real specific details. Whereas I don't. I'm still learning. I want to get better at drawing horses because they're beautiful, fascinating animals. Uh, I just think they're neat creatures. Uh, I'm not. I don't know a lot about them though. So. You know, I need to practice and get better at them. So I, let's put some little triangles up here for his ear. Now, let me look at that eye. What is that? They got a, he has a big eye, big upper eyelid. You know, they got long lashes too. So let's do that. I'm just going to shade it in with this pencil. He's got the nostril. Let me look at the shape of that nostril. It's very interesting right here. You remember, he's got one on the other side, too. So it kind of almost looks like an ear, almost like an ear shape, doesn't it? And ears are hard to draw. Can be. And I'm just getting the basic shape of it. I need a little bump over here. To indicate the eye on the other side of the head so that's that's the his head is not completely profile it's turned just slightly towards you so you're going to see a little bit of bump over there from the other eye not much of it though and 
bottom part of the mouth. It's got a little bit of that mane coming out between. Got the mane coming out between the two ears. I went in, I didn't have this line here before. I just said, I, I diverted off of my original tube shape and I connected with a little triangle, the tube and that, that bottom part of that mouth head, which is so cool looking, I think. Now I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna curve this neck cylinder a little bit. You know, when you go back in and pencil it darker, you don't stay on the exact line. I was just, these lines that we're using from our basic shapes are just to get you lay a foundation. Now, see how I kind of veered off a little bit? I want it to be a little more curved so it looks a little more organic. This horse is pretty muscular. Let me get this other leg. All right, see how I, I use that line for the most part. I didn't make it quite as ball shaped, not quite as circular on the knee joint as my circle. I came in a little more. I just wanted just the emphasis a little bit on that little curved part of that joint. Now let's do top of the neck those ears you know watch a horse video or something they'll twitch and turn and it hears a noise over to the right it's going to turn that way just like you're, if you have a dog they do the same thing so they can go whatever direction you want when it's running when the horse is running really fast it, those ears are going to be pointed back probably Now here's where I probably messed up a little bit. I made this maybe just a little bit longer than my uh, reference photo, but I don't think it's so bad that it'll be a problem. Now right here, I'm not sticking, staying on that line. Otherwise, I'd be going right here. I'm actually bending it back, curving it back a little bit towards the bottom. Those back legs are really muscular. And they're very powerful legs. I certainly wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of a kick. Youch! From one of these horse legs they could really do some damage and I think my sister in all her years of being around horses she got kicked one time all right look at this is kind of interesting on this leg right here see how pointy it is right there see that point it's kind of pointy on this it the back legs are thicker they're wider than the front they're more pointy in the on the posterior side, posterior meaning back side of the leg than the front ones were. They're not as pointy right here as these are, are they? So let me make that a little more pointy. See how I made that more pointy there? Now this one's got kind of a bushy tail. It's just hanging kind of straight down. All right, so that's uh, getting there, isn't it? How's yours looking? I bet it looks pretty good, too. All right, so now what I want to do is go back and get rid of a lot of these lines that I use that I don't need. Like these little circles are kind of distracting me now. So I can use this white eraser 
uh, vinyl eraser. I use all those a lot. I got the, what they call a gum eraser. Kind of looks a little like silly putty. You can shape it, make it small. If you want to get in a little small area, pinch it, twist it. Now I just get in that area. When it gets all dirty, you pull it and stretch it, and it's clean again. Uh, or this is this is also a white vinyl eraser. Just comes in a little holder like that. I think I'll try using that. I don't use it that much. Let's see if I like it. It's like drawing with an eraser. Now, oops, there goes the cap. I don't need that. I did that on purpose. Little brush I use to get rid of all those little eraser shavings. Get rid of that. Not a real great quality eraser. I'm having to press harder than what I would like. But I'll just keep using it. I probably wouldn't use it that much. My stuff I'm working on. Most of my art I do, I don't sell. I do it more for, I give it as gifts to people or I keep it for myself or I trade it sometimes with other artists for something they got. We swap out, share, trade. Occasionally I always sell stuff too, but like I said, I'm not a professional artist, so. It's more for my own self gratification. Makes me feel good relaxes me and you you do art for yourself and for your friends and family and you find the reason why you want to do it for you all right so see how i got rid of those lines it looks a lot better and cleaner now doesn't it but let's put in some of these shadows and shading and stuff like that now, we've colored stuff in previous video of a Crayola. We've used markers, colored pencils. Um, I think I'll use a colored pencil again on this one. So, obviously, I need several shades of brown, maybe a little bit of yellow, a um, little bit of black, but mostly browns, right? A little bit of red. But once again, you don't have to color yours the same way I'm coloring mine. You color yours the way you want yours to look. It can be an all black horse, like the Black Stallion, the famous um, book. Uh, you know, that's completely up to you. I'm going to go and use this kind of light brown. This is called raw umber. You don't have to use raw umber. I'm even going to use the side of the pencil, too. So I get a softer line because I don't want this first coat to be very dark. This is kind of my medium, medium tone that I'm laying down right now. Are you picking up when I'm laying down? Hmm? I hope so. Well, I can do it a little faster this way too and you take your time on your drawing and you do it the way you want to do it. But I'm kind of using a circular motion. I explained that in one of my earlier videos, my second Fox video. And I'll talk more about that when I do a video that's all about shading. And we'll get it more into that. Circular motion. It's I'm not applying a lot of pressure more pressure I'm going to apply to that pencil, the darker it's going to be. I don't want it to be real dark right now. This is just kind of my medium tone. This is just my more of my foundation work. Wherever I see kind of a medium value, that's where I'm not going to put this everywhere. There's some areas where the light's hitting. The horse's muscles. Look how muscular he is. But see how the light's hitting right here and right here. 
right here because those parts of the body are protruding more because of the muscle. The light is hitting that part first. That's why it's a lighter color than this. Even though if I walked right up to this horse, he's going to be this the same color all the way across. This looks lighter only because the light is hitting it more because it's protruding. It's closer to the light than that muscle that's just an inch further away. Does that make sense? I hope so. And we'll talk more about that in future videos. Light value, shading, all that kind of stuff is important if you want to bring your picture to life. Make it more realistic. Make it stand out more. Okay. See how I did that? Used the side of the pencil like this. And I used this kind of motion here. Very light touch. I didn't grip. I have my death grip that I see people using all the time. And bear down really hard. Nope. That's not the way I did it. Okay, now what I want to do is find a shade that's just a little darker. Look at this. Look at these. The first one I used here, it's a lighter brown. Here's a darker brown. I'm going to still kind of use the side of the pencil a little bit. I might press down a little harder, though. I don't have to press down a lot harder because it's a darker pencil anyway. The two legs are on the opposite side of where we're standing. It's going to be darker because we're looking at them from underneath the horse. The, the belly and body of the horse is casting a shadow on it. So it's going to be darker for the most part. This pencil needs to be sharp. Remember, I use I try to use things around the house. This is a little Pringle potato chip cup to camp to catch my pencil shavings. There we go. That's better. I'm gonna use a little bit more of the point up there in those tight little areas. See how they're darker on the back side there? Darker here, it's in the shadow. It's in the shadow. This is kind of a shadow. We need that dark line across there and there. I think I'll do this next and this next. applying more pressure here where it's the darkest and then I slowly but steady let up on the pencil as it gets closer to the lighter light source to blend that in then I use more of the side of the pencil See how it's darker here and it slowly, gradually gets a little lighter and lighter as we get up towards the top. Just like, see how it's darker here and then it gradually gets lighter and blends in. So we're doing the same thing there. Now I am using kind of a point of a pencil for those long hairs. I want a different texture. I don't want it to look so smooth. And here's where I would said earlier I might use a little bit of yellow. I'm not going to use a bright yellow. I'm going to, I like this yellow ochre a lot. 
You don't have to use yellow ochre. You use whatever you want. Your horse doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Don't be frustrated. Oh, my horse doesn't look like Dan Mr. Daniels. That's okay. I might like your horse better than my horse. So you do it the way you want. You color it the way you want. Be happy with what you're doing. Don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like what I'm doing. It's not a contest. All right, see how I used a little bit of the yellow in there? Not a lot. I just wanted a little bit. Because now I'm going to grab, once again, another color. This one's, another, this one's called Burnt Ochre. It's brown with a little bit of red in it. And I think there's a kind of a reddish brown in here. He's probably a darker brown in person. The, the sunlight hitting it is making him look lighter in color than what he probably really is. So let's say you're an artist and the owner of this horse hired you to draw a picture of this horse. And you took photos of the horse and you're back at your studio and you're drawing it. But... Uh, that's what I was just talking about. The luck, hopefully you were there when you were taking the pictures yourself so you could see and remember, oh, well, even though this horse looks a really light brown in this picture, I remember when I was there and saw the horse in person, he was actually uh, a little darker brown than this. And so you would want to include that in your interpretation. Otherwise, when you gave it to the owner, you might go, wow, that my horse is darker brown than that. Why do you make them so light? But we're not doing this for a client. We're doing it for ourselves. So we can we can color our horsey any way we want. You can't stop us. Okay, I think you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. And I'm not going to, you know, it'll take me at least another half hour to finish this. So we don't want to keep on filming and wasting all that. But basically, we're going to try to get closer to this in the end. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and finish it. And then I'll take a little short video of the finished product. And I'll post that video as well. So if you want to see what I look like at the end, you can go look at it. One thing I left off my horse I didn't put this little harness that he's wearing on his head. I didn't include that. So I didn't want that in my picture. But you could if you wanted to. That's okay. Anyway, so now you saw how we use the same kind of techniques we did in the first video. The simple shapes and forms that create our horse. But obviously this horse is more real. This horse here is more realistic then this horse, it's more detailed. It's going to take longer, more concentration. Uh, we'll talk more about shading in a future video down the line. We'll talk more about how to measure what you're drawing. Mine came off a little bit longer than this horse probably, so it wasn't quite as accurate, but it still looks okay. Uh, and hopefully you're having fun with these videos. I'm having fun making them. Uh, we'll do more animals. If there's something specific you want me to draw, uh, Put it include in my comments section below. Say, hey, Daniel, can you teach me how to draw? And you fill in the blank, whatever that is. We'll be drawing more animals. We're eventually going to draw facial features like eyes and nose and mouth, the human face. We'll draw superheroes, you know, Batman, Spider-Man, Superman, that kind of stuff. And maybe dragons. We'll do all kinds of different things. But I want to teach you how to draw something that you're interested in. So you let me know. I like to draw lots of animals and people, so I'll probably do lots of animal ones. I was thinking maybe an elephant next, uh, but you let me know what you want, and we'll work on it. All right, so keep practicing. Keep having fun. Uh, keep washing those hands. Remember, I talked about that in my first videos. Wash your hands with warm water and soap, and as you're washing, sing the happy birthday song in your head to yourself. Sing the happy birthday song twice at a slow, normal pace. And that's how long you should be washing your hands. Try to keep your hands away from your nose and your mouth and your eyes. Don't put your hands in other people's nose, mouth, or eyes either. 
And if you have to cough or sneeze, turn your head and cough and sneeze into this area as well. So stay safe, keep drawing, keep practicing, and most of all, have fun. And I'll see you next time with Drawing with Daniel. Bye.